Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Rosamund Pike plays Marie Curie as she discovers that some elements are radioactive. In the late 19th century, Marie Sklodowska, played by Rosamund Pike, struggles for recognition as a female scientist among her largely male peers, but she meets Pierre Curie, played by Sam Riley, who recognises her brilliance and they become research partners and fall in love. Marie discovers through her work with Pitch Blend two undiscovered elements, radium and polonium, and a process that she coins radioactivity, disproving the assumption that atoms are indivisible. Marie and Pierre's work changes the world, including x-rays and cancer treatment, but soon learn the danger and harm their discovery can also bring. Radioactive is based on the 2010 graphic novel of the same name by Lauren Redness, and the film is directed by Marjan Set Rappi, best known for creating Perseopolis, as well as directing the Ryan Reynolds dark comedy The Voices. The film's script is adapted by Jack Thorne, the hugely prolific writer, hot off of credits like Busey's His Dark Materials, as well as writing the play Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, who is one of the most sought after writers in the industry right now. This is not the first time that Marie Curie's life has been brought to film. Back in 1943, there was a previous biopic that was actually nominated for an Oscar called Madame Curie that was apparently a bit more faithful to her life than most biopics of that time, but there was still a lot of liberties taken in it. More recently, in 1997, there was a French film starring Isabelle Huppert in the role. Radioactive is arguably one of the films most affected by COVID-19. It did very briefly appear in UK cinemas on March 8th, International Women's Day, in a simulcast with its premiere complete with a Q&A. I didn't see it at that screening because I was waiting for when it went on general release later that month, which obviously never happened because by that point cinemas had shut. From that point forward, Radioactive was left on the shelf up until June when it started to appear on VOD services. But that's not really going to matter too much because this Amazon co-production will appear on Amazon Prime in both the US and the UK from July 24th, and I suspect that's how most people are going to watch it. Marie Curie lived an exceptional life. Not only did she make huge scientific discoveries, but she's also the first woman to win the Nobel Prize, as well as winning it twice in two different categories. What she deserves as a film that is just as extraordinary as she is. Unfortunately, Radioactive isn't that movie, and we'll get into the why in due course, but for now, let's just say that it does boast a great performance by Rosamund Pike at the centre of it. I think that Pike buoys this movie in spite of its many, many problems because she is so completely devoted to it, which is only fitting because Marie is portrayed in the film as being very single-minded about her science. She knows that is where her brilliance and talent lay, and thus is completely confident and assured, which is very good because she has to frequently butt heads with the male establishment as being one of the rare female scientists working at this time. When the film opens, she finds that her laboratory has been taken away from her, and she ends up getting a new one through her relationship with Pierre. And it soon becomes clear why two will be bonded together through their work and passion is because both of them realise each other's strengths and know that they'll be stronger working together. They encourage each other to become better scientists. And through Pierre, Marie is given the chance to follow opportunities that she never would have been granted otherwise. It's Pierre that recognises that she is capable of so much more than she is being offered, if only she was given the ability to prove that. And it's so great to see in Sam Rye's performance, especially in his eyes in the earliest scenes of this film, the clear admiration that Pierre has for Marie, which turns to excitement excitement when he realises that she's fulfilling her full potential. I think that, to excuse the pun, Riley and Pike have great chemistry with each other that absolutely sells the romantic side of this story. I think that both of them fall in love with each other for the fact that they're ahead of their time. They're extremely forward-thinking and rather radical and rebellious in their own ways. And I think that Pike's performance is another great example of how she's a really talented actor, but she seems to be stuck in these respectable mediocrities like this film. I think that she is actually probably too good to be propping up 
a movie like this. And it's such a shame. I wish that she get a proper breakout role in the same way that she had in Gone Girl, because this is probably her best performance since that movie. And it's clear that she is trying so very, very hard and has the entire weight of this movie on her shoulders. The film also does a very good job portraying the rapidly accelerating progress during this period of history. The film begins in the late 19th century, moving into the 20th, and over the course of that time, over the span of Marie's life, you get a genuine sense of how they managed to shape the 20th century. Once they discover radioactivity, it's like the genies come out of the bottle. Because the Curies didn't patent their discovery, it becomes a free-for-all. It becomes this massive fad. Suddenly people are putting radioactivity in everything. They're putting it in chocolate, toothpaste, skincare. In one horrifying example, smelling salts as a baldness cure. And we watch all this with a heavy amount of dramatic irony because we know the real dangers of this but that's completely unbeknownst to them. But it's hard not to wince at the Curies smashing up ore as they make their discovery in completely unventilated rooms, constantly and repeatedly exposing themselves to those elements. And so there's a constant tension there over the course of the film, which is only fitting because the movie is trying to wrestle with their legacy. In many ways, radiation has been a force for good and a force for progress, but it's also done some devastating, terrible things. All these are completely unforeseen. The initial excitement turns sour. And this is where the movie starts to stumble. The movie embraces a non-linear timeline. Not only does it jump backwards and forwards through Marie's life, but it also jumps past it. It goes beyond Marie's death to show how the Curie's work will be used in the future. So we get a sequence where a boy is being treated for chemotherapy, but most of these sequences are things like the Hiroshima bombing, or the atomic bomb test, or the Chernobyl disaster. And this feels like a very ambitious idea that swings big and misses even bigger. First of all, every time the movie goes into one of these sequences, it's so extremely jarring. They're not very well integrated into the narrative at all. It certainly doesn't have the fluidity to pull this kind of thing off. And also, it feels exceptionally heavy-handed. There is absolutely no reason to essentially just press the audience's noses in it. An audience going to see this film will be well aware of things like Chernobyl or Hiroshima, they don't need to have it invoked in this movie so directly. Why is this in any way necessary? It isn't. It feels at best completely tangential. And the way that they try to tie it together by cross-cutting with Marie just only makes it feel more peripheral to what's supposedly going on. And also, it feels like the movie is blaming the Curies for things that happened many, many years after their deaths, which only makes it feel more sour. Because it so focuses on the negative, it feels like the movie is going against the very message that it's trying to promote in the first place if it's trying to celebrate Marie Curie. At least that decision shows that Satrapi is not afraid to make bold choices. I think that she does exert a very strong directorial voice that is best seen in its visual style. Radioactive has a very unusual look about it because they've tried to incorporate the properties of radioactivity in it. What that means is that you've got a lot of high exposure, low contrast over the course of this movie. There'll be many scenes that are lit with light, almost overexposing, pouring through blinded windows. And because a lot of the movie is so intentionally desaturated because of this, the moments, particularly when radium appears on the screen, of very vivid colour, are especially striking and really stand out in the frame. Adding to this is the fact that the movie is largely told in flashback, and because of this, many scenes have a very soft fringing at the edge of the frame, which gives the sense of a very evocative memory, but also this kind of lucid, dreamlike state. There's something almost kind of hallucinatory and very luminous about the look 
of the film. It's really, really strange, but I also thought that it was kind of fitting for the film simultaneously, especially with how experimental it is at certain points. And that's the thing that really hangs me up over the course of this movie, is I get the sense that Satrapi wanted to make something maybe a little bit more abstract and offbeat than the movie that she ended up making. There are definitely moments where that becomes much more clear, where the film toys around explicitly with fantasy and dream sequences and blurring the lines between them. A good example of this is a nightmare sequence that calls back to an earlier scene where Marie and Pierre are watching a fire dance, itself an explicit reference to an early silent cinema short. And that image comes back later in the movie as that same dancer twirls around Marie. And and that gives a sense that she has lost control over her life. But also, because that dancer is being lit in so many different colours, that too also evokes radioactivity and its unpredictability. It's a really powerful, striking image that's extremely vibrant and colourful in a way that a lot of the rest of the film isn't, and it feels like a taster of what this movie could have been had she been able to follow through on her ambitions. I think that had this movie not confined itself with playing to a mainstream audience, it could have been more like that, and because of it, I think that this non-linear approach to its storytelling would have made a lot more sense. It would have been a more evocative, less literal experience than what the final film has ended up as. Unfortunately, it feels more like Sat Rappi is constantly doing battle with the script that's been given to her and trying to highest efficiencies through flourishes. It doesn't work. I think that Jack Thorne's script is really below par, in large part because it hits all the things that people hate about biopics. Every single one of them. The first most immediate problem is the dialogue is poor. A good example of this is early on when the Curies meet for the first time in the street. It's literally just a passing moment. But then, by their second encounter just a few scenes later, suddenly Pierre knows everything about Marie and is literally listing her accomplishments to her and that establishes how ruthlessly expositive the dialogue is. Nothing goes unsaid when it can't be explicitly stated. Characters will tell you exactly what they aim for, how they're going to do it and what they've accomplished next. It's all so very very on the nose to the extent that it feels like Thorne hasn't actually adapted the graph graphic novel, he's adapted the Wikipedia page. Characters speak in sound bites that sound like sentences off of Wikipedia the whole time, and it really infuriates and grates. One of the biggest problems with biopics as a genre is they try to take an entire life and cram it into two hours. And to do this, they use a lot of narrative shortcuts and conventions. And neither to say, this can be extremely reductive. First of all, by bunching up all these accomplishments together, you get no weight of significance to them. But also, because they use so many shorthands, it makes extraordinary lives feel very, very conventional. Almost to the point of mundane, they lose sight of what makes their subjects so special because so many biopics just feel like each other. They feel like the kind of things that we've seen over and over again, but with the details replaced out. That's why a lot of more recent biopics have tried to focus more on specific events rather than an overall picture of someone's life, because that approach works better, and Radioactive is a good example of how the former really does not work. It's because life does not have a proper narrative structure to it. It's pretty clear that there is an actual story that Radioactive could have focused on, and it's that between Marie and Pierre, but that's the first hour of the movie, and once Pierre exits out of it, like Marie, 
the movie loses what it wants to be. What this means in narrative terms is there's no coherent themes or arcs, there's no journey for the audience to follow. The film does attempt themes, like of course the idea that Marie is opening up opportunities for women and overcoming the prejudices of the male establishment at that time, but there's not really a progression over the course of the story, it's more just something that she overcomes and then overcomes again and then overcomes again and it doesn't really land because the movie is trying to incorporate so many other things simultaneously. The idea of radiation sickness should be a lot more suspenseful because we should be seeing it on screen, we should be cutting away to seeing the wide-ranging effects, but so often it happens off screen and delivered in dialogue, with the sole exception of the Curies who do a lot of coughing that's very heavy handed. Yes, this is the kind of movie where someone coughs into a handkerchief and it's got blood in it. That's how you know that someone's dying. That really is a bit of a cliche. But that really just goes to show that the movie doesn't really have a proper story. It's just a lot of things happening over and over again and that becomes really clear once our main investment in the story is lost. This is especially clear by the time of the film's later scenes in World War One, where Marie joins her now grown up daughter Irene on the front lines trying to provide portal x-rays for soldiers and it feels like there's nowhere near enough time to give this the scope this really deserves. Also it feels like a real waste of Anya Taylor-Joy. She pops up about 20-25 minutes away from the ending of this film and it's a very underwritten part but at least Taylor Joy does try to provide some level of personality to the grown-up Irene. You get a sense that she's very proud of her mother and wants to follow in her footsteps but also that she was not the easiest person to grow up around, that she was a little bit of a difficult, prickly personality. At least that communicates that idea much more subtly to the audience than many other things in this movie, but it just exemplifies how this film tries to do far too much. Radioactive is a mess, it has a lot of interesting ideas, but it doesn't pull them off successfully. If anything, it's more fascinating because it misfires so much, because it feels like a movie that's battling between trying to be something more artful or something more mainstream, and those two sides are at war with each other. Simply put, the movie's scope far exceeds its grasp. It's too ambitious. You cannot condense the entire life and legacy of Marie Curie into two hours, and that's why the movie feels so uneven. That it works as much as it does largely comes down to the performances of Rosamund Pike and Sam Riley. They make you care about the drama. It sure isn't the script, and it feels like they're working in spite of it a lot of the time. I think that ultimately, this is a failed experiment. Radioactive is an ambitious attempt to try and adapt the extraordinary life and work of Marie Curie, but it attempts to encompass far too much. Marjan Zadrapi's direction gives the film plenty of visual flair, giving it a luminous appearance that is fitting for the subject, but is desperately trying to compensate for the rigidly formulaic script by Jack Thorne that trips into every biopic cliché and filled with clumsy expository dialogue. The movie becomes a clash between the experimental and the conventional, with the more abstract moments suggesting what this film could have been, but the time jumps to explore a legacy and consequences of the Curie work are ill-fitting and profoundly misjudged for a film which already overreaches. Luckily, Rosamund Pike gives a terrific performance as Marie in her dedication to science and works with Sam Rai to sell their love story despite the limitations of the script. Radioactive ultimately tries very hard but unfortunately falls short of brilliance. If you like this review, then take your science over to my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early, among other perks, including access to my Discord server. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. Thank you